Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to All Beer Inside, the quarantine edition episodes. Joining me today from the Southern Ontario region, we have Drunk Pokeroo. Cheers, my friend. Cheers. Uh, so thanks for joining us today. I appreciate you uh, allowing us to interview you. Uh, to start, what are you having out of the region today? Uh, so right now I just poured, it's hard can to get on the thing, <laughs> from a, a brewery out of Barrie called Redline. Uh, it's their session NEPA. So Session New England IPA, Moonlight on Chrome. Uh, it's nice. Again, light beers are not my favorite thing, but um, it's it's pretty. That's the first time I even tried it, so it's decent. Nice bit of pine in it and, and some some citrus. So I'll, I'll, yeah. I got four of them. Uh, I'm having a beer I've had before from uh, Orleans Brewing Company. It's called Kolsch Me Outside. Uh, nice. It's a classic Kolsch. You could see my interview with Celia, I believe episode 21, uh, our interview with them. Uh, before the world uh, went down uh, lockdown. Uh, so as we sh- say on the show, a toast. Toast. <laughs> oh, yeah, nice crushable beer. I, I don't mind a, a nice Lagerdale. And, I mean, you know, the the benchmark is probably Lug Tread. I yeah. think is the benchmark for that style because there's so many breweries used to brew them and they were not good. Like it was kind of like a default beer and luckily they've gone away from that and seem to be like Pilsners and, and Blondales even mm-hmm. with a bit of kick to them. So I, I'm not, I'm not unhappy about not seeing a lot of Lagerdales except for unless they're done well. I've had that Orleans one. It's nice. Yeah. I'm a, I'm a big fan of crushable beers, especially with the summer rolling around. I'll be, I'll be sitting back with a lager or a, or a Kolsch and then later on go to my happy bitter place of IPAs and, and haziness uh, at the end of the evening. So. Excellent. Uh, so what's the beer story? What brought you to blogging, Instagram, et cetera? So, I mean, I, th- I think it, it, it all began, Instagram just began as a way to, uh, to share whatever I was doing in my life as opposed to, it wasn't beer at first. It had nothing, it had to do with beer, but at that point I was drinking like old Milwaukee Pabst, whatever. So it was just random stuff. Um, it started to be craft beer when I started to try these things, you know, I'd find them at the LCBO. There was very small section in there of new beers. A lot of them were from Bose. Um, and I started trying them and I was like, it was because of untapped, right? I wanted to get an untapped badge. You know, you wanted that count to go up. And I thought, well, this is fun. And I was, so I would start sharing them on Instagram and it just kind of organically happened after that. It was all, but at the beginning, it was all about getting badges. It was all about badges. We would, we would all just buy every new beer we could see. We would go to somebody's house, everybody would share them and we would just up our counts and get badges. And that was the, the nexus because my friends never kind of left that area, right? For them, it's just still, hey, let's get badges. Let's just keep our untapped going. I left untapped. I have it, but I don't use it very much anymore. Um, I started to see a different route because I found that beer gave me an opening into seeing who I was when I wasn't just coming home and pound. Because I would come home from work and pound a six-pack old Milwaukee in a half an hour and you know, kind of just try to black out of the day. And when I got craft beer, I was like, well, no, I kind of want to enjoy this flavor. I want to try this. No, this is neat. I've never tried that before. And it really expanded how I felt about beer. It changed my relationship with alcohol. Yeah, for sure. I used to uh, like uh, my CJEP because in Quebec, we have CJEP instead of grade uh, 12 and 13. We have CJEP. So like when I started drinking, it was pounding 40s, playing hacky sack with friends, uh, going to it, the place was called Mad Hatters back in the day. But if you had a coupon, it was a $5 pitcher. So, you know, it's like, oh, let's, you know, we're 18 to 21. Let's just get blackout drunk. And then around 25, I hit uh, the Mondial de la Bière, which is our world beer festival. Uh, And I'm like, hey, wait, beer has flavor. What's what's going on here? Uh, It it changes your perspective. Yeah. It changes how you see it. It's not just beer is not, I mean. And I always, I get on people and I, I get annoyed with it. Well, I, I would drink it if it didn't have any alcohol in it. Well, no, no, I like the alcohol too still. I do enjoy a pint, right? I want that kind of edge taken off the day. Uh, two pints is fantastic on most days or a pint even. But being able to taste like, you know, like getting this citrusy, this is lemon, lime, you know, passion fruit. It's kind of this, you know, it's a nice little nipa. I just finished a West Coast IPA that was big grapefruit, orange pith. I didn't know I liked that stuff. I didn't mm-hmm. know that stuff tasted like. Yeah, it was the same thing. Um, I used to be like, I was always a big proponent of like, like, oh, I got to stick to Molson because they're the best and they're Canadian beers. And and then it's like, oh, there's a local brew pub called Brutopia. 
they have a strawberry blonde. I'm like, oh my God, this is like tasty. I'm enjoying this. It's low alcohol. I could drink a bunch. And then it well, goes I mean, it from used there. To be, it used to be like a Labatt's guy or a Molson guy. Mm-hmm. I was a Molson guy. And then I was, you know, I was drinking so much that I was whatever was the cheapest. So we had Laker being made here in Hamilton. It was Maker a Laker. It's a buck of beer. <laughs> I drank a lot of Laker. Um, <laughs> and then it was Brava Light, which is probably the worst beer ever made. It is horrid. Yeah. Uh, but then I got into Old Milwaukee and Paps, which honestly, I'm going to tell you right now, Old Milwaukee and Paps, uh, again, it's another argument I have with craft beer people. as I Because there is an evolution you go through. There's like cycles of, uh, and stages of being a craft beer drinker. Um, the Molson Canadian and, and Blue and, and Old Milwaukee, they're bland. They're boring, but they're not bad. Mm-hmm. You can't brew on that level on that scale and have them taste the same whether they're you have them here you have them in moscow you have them in florida the the fact they can scale up that big and have that product bland as it is be the same is an impressive thing it's the mcdonald's of beer yeah well i know budweiser has a very strict uh ph balance they have to, to go through uh to stay consistent and the i mean they were the king of beers for decades for reasons so they're, they're, they're trust I trust them now there's breweries in Ontario that I trust implicitly I will drink anything they put out because uh, over the years I've come to see that they care about what comes out of their tanks mm-hmm. you know we had a brewer the other day we were talking to and she said I dumped a vat of beer in the middle of a pandemic because when they tried it it didn't hit the marks this is a small brewery out of Whitby and she says it's just it wasn't the beer we thought it was going to be something was off we dumped it and I to me I hate to hear that but I also love to hear it because it says you give a damn. And actually their beer is coming. I, I ordered the beer from them last week because I'm like, I, I trust them. Yeah. Uh, the boys from Luke's, uh, I've gotten to know pretty well. Uh, Luke's Brewery, and, uh, not actually not far from the Montreal airport. And they had to dump one of their new beers because they said it was the same thing. It just did not hit the mark. I mean, it's, and... it's, it's an impressive thing to hear as, as a consumer. I, I trust, I, I, it helped me trust them more. Yeah. And you mentioned untapped. I'm still about untapped. I don't care about the badges. Uh, I am, I do pad my numbers because of beer festivals. It's just, it's going to happen. I'm trying new beers. Uh, to me, oh, it's yeah. like my Pokemon go and the OCD part, uh, part of my brain says, get more, try more beers, try more beers. So I think when I did it and I mean, it, we're, you got to go back, like we're talking 2014 when I started doing it. So it's been six, six ish years. Um, it was a very different time in my life. It was a very rough time. I had lost a business. You know, my life was kind of in this massive turmoil and this guy gave me I was working with a guy. We were working like, you know, six days a week, 9 a.m. to midnight. I was working in a kitchen, you know, just trying to keep myself afloat. And this guy, hey, let's do this untapped. And I'm like, it gave me a goal, right? It gave me some way. And then it, it you know, things got better in my life. I got a better job. I found, you know, found a way out. But untapped was just like this great tool. And like I said, a lot of my friends still use it for the same thing. Just keep their numbers, keep track of their beers. I use, I use Instagram sort of as an untapped now. Mm-hmm. Um, I post almost every beer I drink. There's very few beers I don't post, but that even that has evolved over the years. Like it's changed. Um, you know, when we first started, I was very, very concerned about the image of what it was. And I wasn't originally drunk Pokeroo on, on Instagram. I was originally a guy called Robbie Bacon Strips because I love bacon. Um, and there's a YouTube channel where they do like wacky food. And the guy's always like bacon strips, bacon strips, bacon strips. And the drunk pokeroo thing happened and then sort of grew from there. But yeah, it was, it was always about just kind of having fun. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's great. And so that's where drunk pokeroo came from. You just like, okay, that's, there is a tiny story. So I don't know if you know, I don't know if I have it Quebec, but uh, TVO, we have TV Ontario, we have the polka dot door. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Well, uh, I think it was CBC would pick it up here. Maybe. So so they have polka dot door. So there was a man and a woman that hosted this show. Um, halfway through the show, the man would disappear to go do something. And then the pokeroo would show up and do some stuff. And then he, he would leave and the man would come back and he'd be like, I missed the pokeroo again. And I never, when you're a kid, you don't get that the pokeroo was the dude. Cause this is like TV access. Like it was, it didn't have a lot of money when you're a kid. You're like that poor guy never sees that guy. So what happened was one day and I'm going to say it's July 2015. We had gone to a party. I had gotten completely drunk again, as always off of bad macro. And I guess I'd promised to go to a beer festival the next day, but we didn't have any money to go. So when my brother-in-law called me, I'm like, ah, you know, sorry, man, you know, drunk Rob couldn't do it. And I looked at my wife and I said, you know, sober Rob needs to have a conversation with drunk <laughs> Rob, but that guy's never here when I am. And I'm like, oh, I'm the drunk pokeroo. So I jokingly changed my name on Instagram and it just kind of stuck. But not, again, not anything about beer really. It was more about my lack of 
control of promising stuff. Um, and then when it started taking off, it just became, I mean, you, you're not going to change that now, but it was never yeah. focused. Like a, I'm not craft beer, poker root. You know, I always say I, I'm a great drunk. I'm a wordy drunk. Yeah. Well, my own personal, um, it started off, it was like just carp. Cause my last name's carpenter. Uh, and it was just a nickname cause there was a thousand Michaels in, in the group of friends that we had. So it's, Oh, there's carp. Oh, there's birdie. Oh, there's this guy. Okay. And then somebody's like carpe diem. It means seize the day. I'm like, I like that. And then uh, I've been a pro wrestling fan since I was like five. Uh, and then Can't somebody's like, oh, killer Kowalski, but you'll be killer carpe diem. I'm like, okay, there we go. Killer carpe diem. And I mean, then that's, but that's sort of organic too, right? It just sort of happened. It wasn't like you sat down and went a list of names. And I, I know there are people who've done this on their Instagram and that's okay too. Mm -hmm. Again, I'm not here. I, I don't like to, to rain on anybody's parade. I know there are a lot of people who kind of get down on people who specifically go after being craft beer this or craft beer that. I'm like, hey, let, let everybody have their fun. Yeah. Life is way too complicated, especially right now. Life is way too complicated. <laughs> let them have that little moment. But the organic names, like this one was completely organic. I can I actually ha I can find the post the day I did it because there's a po picture of a beer up by a campfire in our backyard. And a friend commented, oh, I love the new name. And that was kind of, you know, I celebrate the anniversary every year. I usually do a beer giveaway. Um, just to sell, it's kind of a jokey anniversary. But again, you know, it's become, you know, Pints with Poke is the YouTube now. And, and you know, I, I do poets. I'm the Barley Poet. I do poems on Twitter. There's all little, little things that have just come out of it. But again, it's all organic. I'm not smart enough to plan anything out. I work 50 hours a week. It's basically I pull something out of the fridge. Let's go, boys. Oh, it's great. And uh, I haven't had a chance to watch your YouTube, but I have read your blog, uh, which I wanted you to bring up because uh, you, you're an award-winning beer writer. Yeah, and yeah. Your, your, your blog is very open and personal. And I find that very impressive because especially in a society nowadays, people are not as direct or honest. And I find your, your blog is very, very open and honest. Now, it's, it's hard to write now. I'm finding, and I was talking about this with my wife, that I have a lot of ideas. The problem is right now it's very difficult to write because it's hard to write anything that doesn't have to do with the current situation. But, I mean, when I started it, I started it because I thought, now, in my naivete, naivete I, I didn't realize there was a lot of other beer writers out there. I've now since corrected that. I've, you know, I know most of the Ontario beer writers, ridiculously brilliant writers out here. Um, again, I'll, I'll, I'll put you in touch with them because I enjoy them and I think you'll enjoy them. Um, but what it was, was just a way for me to share stories of how I came from being this, you know, drunken guy, drinking macro sort of changed my life and found craft beer. And then it became about promoting and helping, you know, promote the industry itself. And then it became about talking a lot about mental health because at the end of the day, I'm, I mean, I'm 47, my age group, and I, I grew up in a blue collar part of town. I'm from Hamilton, Ontario, which is, you know, steel mills. My dad was a steel worker. My grandfather's steel workers and truck drivers you didn't talk about emotions. You didn't have feelings. You just you drank a beer and you'd be fine. Yeah. My, my father was a steel worker. So I, yeah. I know where you're coming from. You know, even to this day, my dad's 65 years old. He didn't change that much. He's a good guy. He's a loving father, but you know, he softened a little bit, but he still, you don't talk about your emotions. So when I started writing about it, I was getting people sending me messages and I thought, well, there's something there to it. And I, now I've seen more of it in craft beer from other people who've been able to come out and talk about, you know, depression, anxiety, that kind of stuff. Honestly, it, it, it was cathartic to talk about stuff like that. You know, I talked about, uh, I wrote a couple of articles about not, we don't, we can't have children. We tried, we went through all the stuff, we weren't able to have children. And it resonated with a lot of people out there um, talking about, you know, the days when you kind of fall into that trap of drinking too much, or you fall into that cycle of drinking too much. These kind of things I think are important to talk about. And you know, the award was, and I'll say this about the award. It was the, uh, the Ontario, oh my goodness, <laughs> but it's, it's an Ontario voted award run mm -hmm. by the Bartel here. It's the guy's name, Bartel, Cass Enright. It's the Ontario Brewing Awards. Um, and they're voted on and you, you get not, people just write your name down. And it was the last year they did Ontario beer writer. The next year they changed it to beer personality. And like the guy who won it runs a, a running group with 10,000 members. I don't have that kind of clout. But the year I won the writer award, it was it was just fun, um, because at the end of the day, I'm not a personality guy. I'm not a you know fancy, good looking guy. I'm not young. I have zero connections in the industry. You know, I just I've made that myself. Just but friendships. I don't look at it. I'm not. I would say I'm not smart enough to plan anything that good. 
you know, it was just, it was, it was a very lucky moment. Yeah, no, with this show is, uh, I'm, I'm willing to put myself out there. Most of the time I used to be a super shy kid. So the fact that I'm uh, presenting myself in this form, let alone in Instagram, uh, that it's like, whoa, where did this come from? And uh, I, I used to blog back in my twenties, but that's, that's long gone. That's what it was old, depressed me. But now like ever since the advent of, of my crappier personality, it's, you know, I'm, I'm, tr I've tried to stay more positive. Something like this happens all of a sudden it, it took a little, uh, it, it brought the glass down to half full instead of half or half empty instead of half full, which it's a pandemic. I mean, humanity has gone through it hundreds of times. So we're, just get yeah, through I mean, it we're going through it now. I mean, I, I, I think that that's, you hit it on the head, is that the craft beer just sort of gives you some kind of enthusiasm. Mm -hmm. It gives you a way to look at life with a little bit of light, a little bit of levity. And, and I mean, a lot of the stuff, like Twitter, I find, is can either be really intense or very funny. And yes. there's not a lot of middle ground in there. You know, like I can go on Twitter and tweet stuff about, you know, getting drunk and and people get that it's a joke like it's just you know joking i'm gonna drink this whole two four um that kind of stuff instagram is a different sort of fish because it's very visual still a lot of people don't read what you write like i have there's people that write like you know that big massive review i read it because i care and I, I love to read it i know nobody's reading it i know nobody's you know there's no there's not a lot of people reading the big reviews I do them both. Sometimes I'm, I'm wordy as hell and I'll go on. Sometimes I'm like, here's what the beer tastes like. Have a good night guys. Yeah. That's uh, that's right at home too. For me. Um, I, I'm not as uh, articulate uh, when I'm trying a beer. Uh, I do my Thursday. Personally, I do my own Thursday night uh, beer, beer delight as I call it, where I'll try four new beers and I'll be like, this was my favorite tonight. And here's why, because the maltiness was a lot more forward than the rest and this and this and that. And, that's really the only articulation I'll have in my personal Instagram, which I'll associate to this as all beer inside as, Oh, your host killer carpet Diem from at all beer inside. Tried these four tonight. Uh, I always say, always say support local. You always should support local. Well, I mean, we're lucky enough to have them and, and, and by all accounts um, and for some, I don't know how this has happened. And I know how it's happening because people have money to spend, I guess, because we can't go anywhere else the brewery seem to be doing okay. Now they're still in survival mode, mm -hmm. but some of them are having record sales. And that says a lot about our ability to consume alcohol and the fact that they were able to pivot on a dime and go, okay, this is the new model. How do we do it? Now, a lot of them have got, gone slowly. A lot of them pivoted really good. Um, I hope it continues. I really do. I hope that this delivery model continues because it is fantastic. Well, you guys in Ontario, uh, I don't know about the rest of Canada. I'm pretty sure they probably have the same thing. There's very odd alcohol laws in Quebec that we have to deal with, unfortunately. And one of them is the breweries can't deliver, but they're allowed to be open up to eight hours. Like it's very specific hours they are allowed to be open. Right. Uh, and some of them are like order online. Uh, we'll text us when you get here and we'll just drop it off the curb. I mean, and that's, uh, yeah, again, adapting. Everybody's adapting to the new reality. They're looking, where are the laws? Where can we bend a little bit? Where can we kind of sneak in under? You know, if you've got food, you can give other people's beer out. So there's one Ontario brewery that has an Ontario six-pack. They've got beers from five other breweries, including Dominion City out of Ottawa. But because they sell food, they're also a restaurant. They can sell those six beers because it's they're allowed to sell alcohol. So, I mean, it's it's a very, it's a gray area and... Some breweries are going to take advantage. We'll see where we are on January 1st, 2021. Mm -hmm. That's going to be when all of these laws are kind of grandfathered to that date. And then we see where we are. But it's going to be hard to bring it back because once you give people something, it is really hard to take it back. Yeah, uh, I think all the liquor control boards across Canada, and you really need to get together. Uh, I remember there was a thing online, a petition like uh, beer for Canadians or, or something like that, where we want to drop it. We want Nova Scotia beers in Quebec and Ontario. I want beers from Vancouver. If, if I'm sitting down and I'm like, oh, I feel like an actual West Coast IPA, I can have one. West Coast IPA. So. I, hey, listen, I mean, we, we, did, we spent a, a, a lovely five days in Quebec about four years ago, Quebec City, actually. We were in a walking distance. I want to say it was like the Black Cat. It's like a brewery named after a cat. Um, but I mean, we were walking distance to like three or four breweries. It was a great time. Fantastic beer, great atmosphere. Quebec City in the middle of the summertime. It was just a, one of the most beautiful places. 
places. I have friends who live in Quebec and Nova Scotia, and we've sent beer back and forth to each other. Again, I'm spoiled in Ontario when you have 470 breweries. It's a ridiculous number of beer. And, you know, right in my own hometown, I don't have to leave my own town to get different styles and people who are really good at those styles. We're spoiled. I mean, as much as you can be spoiled. Yeah, uh, I, I, so I, I know it's slowly changing. Uh, grocery stores in your area are finally, or in yeah. Ontario, yeah, we're, are we're a little behind Quebec that way. Yeah, uh, that's it. We, uh, they're called, or well, there are independent grocery association stores. Uh, the one not closest to me, but a little like, let's say a kilometer and a half instead of a kilometer, they gutted their entire like chip and soda section and just made it all craft beer from Quebec. Because there's money to be made and they see that they recognize that let's face it people drinking craft beer tend to have a little bit of extra income um there is a great and I, i've talked about it before and i'll probably talk about it again there's a great privilege to be able to drink craft beer we are spending a premium amount of money to drink a premium product a lot of people don't have that privilege i mean people right now i mean maybe not so much in canada because the government seems to take care of them mm -hmm. but i mean when your choice is, you know, buy groceries or buy, you know, that, that six pack of the new IPA, or you get a six pack of old milk because you just want a beer at the end of the week. So I think there's, there's this privilege that we have um, to, to be able to afford the beer, which is yes. fantastic. But I mean, it needs to be acknowledged that there's something there, you know, this is, this is definitely a premium thing that we get to, we get to enjoy, which is fantastic, but you know, we're lucky. Yeah, no, like that GST bonus that we got out where it's like, which to stimulate the Canadian economy, $250 of that so far has gone to craft beer. So <laughs> I mean, why not? I mean, I, it's funny because uh, my wife got laid off and then, you know, we were lucky enough they deferred our mortgage and we were like, <laughs> what do we do with this bounty? Because then she went back to work and we're like, well, you know, we're just going to ride it. We're going to you know, bank some of the money, pay off some other bills. But I'm like, I'm order some beer. Yeah. Yeah. You know, but we're, we are being very careful with the beer ordering because my wife drinks craft beer as well. She likes porters, stouts, lagers, pilsners, brown ales. Uh, she hates IPAs. She hates sours. So when we order, I've got to look to make sure they've got something for her for a lot of times. Again, she probably has maybe four beers a week, so it's not a lot. So I get her two and I get like 10. So it's, it's, it's a nice balance. Yeah, it's a perfect balance. I mean, uh, uh, it's a local place around here uh, just outside of downtown Montreal. It's called Peluso. And uh, Rodenbach finally came into Quebec. Nice. Uh, so uh, I bought it last year, the Rodenbach 2017 vintage. And then I went beer shopping yesterday and I saw it. And I'm like, yep, this is one of the best beers I've ever had. So Fantastic this is, beer. Yeah. Fantastic beer. I mean, I'm a big Belgian head. My dream trip is Belgium, Germany, Czech Republic. I want to drink Pilsner or Cal in Pilsen. I've heard it's a transformative experience. I know it's owned by Budweiser now. I don't mm -hmm. care. Uh, Germany is Germany. I want to drink German beers in Germany and I want to drink Belgian beers in Belgium. I want to drink monk beers near monks. Yeah. That's uh, I say that consistently with people is I want to drink a beer with a monk. <laughs> I mean, that's my dream. So here in Ontario, we have two very Belgian focused breweries. There's a brewery in Toronto plans uh, that has a Saison Avonport. It's called, it is the closest thing to Saison Dupont I've ever had. It is with, I'm ordering actually from them next week. They just brewed a new batch. Uh, it is outstanding. And there's a brewery in a little brewery in a little town. They don't even deliver. They won't deliver during the pandemic. You got to go pick it up. Mm -hmm. They only make Belgian style beers. They own, that's all they make is just Belgian style beers. They make them good. Doubles, dubels, triples, quads. Um, my wife hates them. So I don't get as many as I like, but uh, I mean, I'll drink IPAs. I'm okay with that. Yeah, it's those Trappist styles that, that I'm really looking for. Uh, so you mentioned beer cations you want to go on. What are a couple that you've done before? So we did Quebec, as I said. So every year, now we didn't do it last year, and obviously this year we couldn't do it. Uh, we had planned on it. We used to do cross Ontario trips called Pocapalooza. Uh, we had done four of them. The last one we did, so we would just pick different regions, and we would take a week off work, and we would travel. Every day we would go to a different region. We would usually do one or two overnight trips. You know, we'd go to – we go to Ottawa and we'd stay overnight in Ottawa. So we visit breweries all the way to Ottawa, visit Ottawa all day, come home, visit other breweries. Um, the last one we did, we visited 50 breweries in 52 breweries in seven days, um, all over Ontario from Windsor to Ottawa. Uh, we had planned going north. Uh, the Pocapalooza trip was fantastic. Uh, we did a trip up north last year. We did like all the up north breweries, not all way, way up north. We went to like Muskoka. Uh, we stayed up, we ended up staying in Gravenhurst at Sawdust City, owns a hotel 
in Gravenhurst called the Lone Pine Inn. Um, and my, actually, my friend Ren and I stayed there uh, with, with our wives and um, a fantastic time. For me, a lot of it is day trips because we're in Ontario and everything's close by. But the Pocapalooza tours were fantastic. I think we did we did four of them. Then we, we plan on doing another one. And, like the next one's going to be blowout. I think we're going to have to take like 10 days off. Other people go to the Caribbean. I travel around Ontario buying beer. I think the, like, it, we spend thousands of dollars and it, we have so much fun. Again, we don't have kids, we have cats. Mm-hmm. So you can leave them for a few days and have somebody check in on them. But um, I'd love to go, if I had dream trips again, I think just talk to Belgium, Czech Republic, Germany, Vermont for me, because I'm an IPA guy, uh, Russian River Brewing in California. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I mean, Pliny the Elder, Pliny the Younger. These are two beers. I've had Pliny the Elder, I think. It is. I have the, whatever one's the double I've had. The triple I haven't had, so I've had the younger, not the not the elder. Mm-hmm. Somebody brought me one back um, to go to Sierra Nevada. I want to go drink, you know. I want to go drink at places like there's there's the brew pub in Vancouver where the where craft brewing really started in on, in Canada, um, and I would love to go to, and sit in an English pub and drink Cascale all night. Yeah, whenever I see a cask draw at a at a local uh, brew pub or or a pub itself, and I'm like, yep, one of those, please. Uh, okay. I've I've done Vermont. It's fantastic i just did berlin well so i started in stowe because i had a couple hours to kill so i had alchemist and the two other breweries in the area uh and then i made my way to burlington and i hit 15 breweries that weekend because there's three that are literally within a 10 minute walking distance circumference wise so i mean i've had a lot of beers from vermont i am a very lucky person um because a lot of it has to do with how open i am about everything but people send me beers (laughs) and it's like, hey man, can I send you a beer? And I'm like, can I send you a beer? Like, no, nah, I just want to get people stop at my house. But my wife was like, just give people our address. And I'm like, well, you had beer. So I'm just one time, I'll tell you a story. One time I went to London, Ontario. There's a brand new brewery opening. It's called Anderson Craft Dales. Again, if you ever go to London, there's another place in Ontario that's great. So these guys make straight to style. It says it's a West Coast IPA. It's a West Coast IPA. Stout, stout, simple, easy, straight up. So I go there. They had been open two weeks and I'm sitting at the bar. I never say anything when I go in. I just order, you know, a flight. I bought some beers. Some guy comes up and says, hey, are you the drunk poker? I said, yeah, I am. He says, oh, you know, I follow you. And then we start talking. We follow each other on Instagram. You want to come back to my house and try some of my homebrew? I'm like, sure, why not? About 10 o'clock at night, my wife called me. She says, where are you? Because <laughs> I had just left from work. She had to go to something after work. And I just said, I'm going to go to London. I, oh, I'm, I'm at Pat's house. Pat who? I'm at, I don't even know his last name. I asked him his last name. He told me, I'm like, I'm at Pat's house in London. She's like, are you coming home? I'm like, eh, probably tomorrow. And like, this is the kind of thing that, but again, different. I'm a big, big dude. You know, nobody's trying to kidnap me. <laughs> it's just a guy really proud of his homebrew. And we just kind of sat there and we watched my videos and we were talking about beer. He ended up working for Anderson later on, like he's an award-winning homebrewer guy. But that's the kind of way you make friends, right? People recognize you because I've always put my, my face out there too. I've always been very, you know, upfront about who I am and what I do. And those are the kind of things that happen. Like I get... When we go to a beer festival, I take so many drunk selfies with fat dudes like me. They, I, I, it's never like really, you know, good looking people. It's always like dudes who look like me. They want to like show their wife, this is the guy that drinks more than I do. So, I mean, I, I'm really comfortable with that. So I, I kind of enjoy it. It's, it's a little bit of fun. Um, it's a very, I'm a very tiny celebrity moment in a small pond. And, it, you know, it, it's, it's fun. It's a laugh. And we, we can go get a beer. Uh, you mentioned trying home brews. Do you brew yourself? Uh, occasionally i'm not a big home brewer my cousin has a setup i brewed with him a few times we brewed a few ipas uh, because i'll tell you something so we went to uh the local homebrew place first time and the guy who who was the brewmaster at the homebrew place because it's one of those places you can brew your own there or they'll brew it for you like you know you dump in the hops or you can buy stuff to brew at home and he actually now is the brewmaster at a brewery in ontario called uh oh my goodness set of brantford mash paddle um and he said, brew an IPA because if you, we both love West Coast IPAs, my cousin and I, he says, brew an IPA because if you do, there's a lot of wiggle room. You can make mistakes and the hops will cover a lot of mistakes. Whereas if you brew like a Pilsner or a lager, you're going to screw it up. And you're going to get discouraged. And he was right. We brewed a couple of IPAs. They were fantastic. Homebrew. <laughs> like I, I enjoy the concept of homebrewing, but it's a lot of cleaning. Um, I always say I'm a way better beer drinker than I am a beer maker. And I'm, I'm okay with that being the case at this point. I mean, you know what, again, it's fun to do. And once this is all over, I'll probably go brew a couple of beers with them just so we can hang. I think it's more the hangout brewing beer with somebody. Like I don't want to brew beer by myself in my garage. I want to brew beer with somebody, hang out, drink a bunch of beers we like, 
try to create a beer we like. But for us, we're just brewing West Coast IPAs because that's the best. That's my favorite style of beer. If uh, the opportunity presented itself, would you collab with somebody on kind of like an Instagram blog level to brew with a brewery? Yeah. So in Ontario, we have the IG Brew Crew, um, the Instagram Brew Crew. Now, I'm not an official member because I don't like to be part of anything. <laughs> I'm not. I, they do it on Saturdays. A lot of the brews happen on Saturdays. I work every Saturday. Um, but they do a lot of collabs. I've done collabs with uh, the, the beer writers of Ontario. We did a collab with uh, Great Lakes Brewing um, a couple years ago. It was called, uh, was it? Something about it was a Donald Trump reference. I can't remember at this point now. It was so long ago. Uh, fake news or something like that, just for fun. Um, I've collabed with Shacklands. I've actually got another one online. So I had a black cat that lived with me for 20 years. Her name was Jinx. When she passed away, uh, it was the outpouring we got for that blew me away. Uh, I didn't realize how many people had actually paid attention to a lot of the stuff because she was in everything. She used to jump up and be in my beer, beer videos. Um, people sort of followed her, you know, her life for the last five years. Uh, so one brewery reached out to me after she passed away and I said, listen, I know it's too soon. When you're ready, let's brew a, you know, a, a beer to honor her. And I was like, that's pretty cool. So we will do that again. Um, we've had offers. We've got, you know, feelers out now. Mostly I like to do it because my wife gets to do it with me and she has a blast doing it. For me, I'm like, I don't know how beer is made now, but it's fun to do because again, you're hanging out with the brewery, you're making beer. You're not just making it though. So I'll tell you a story. So Mike Lackey's the, the brewmaster at Great Lakes Brewery in Toronto. He's been the brewmaster there for what, 20 years, 25 years. Um, so we did a collab there. And I, I, I've i never done a collab, my first collab. And I go in and I'm like all gung home, like, all right, I'll dump the malts in. What do we do next? And he looks at me and goes, listen, here's how collabs work. You put one thing in, you grab a beer. You come That's back, sweet. we stir stuff, you grab a beer. He's like, mostly just drinking all day. I'm like, this is the best thing that ever happened <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I'm hoping uh, for our, our show's sake. I've got ideas. Um, as I was saying, as he was talking, uh, when I spoke with Le Fermenter or The Fermenter in uh, Les Amtions, he's like, it fermented in my brain. And I'm like, oh my God, that is a great analogy of my, the ideas I have. Uh, yes. As a crap beer drinker, stuff ferments in your brain. I, I love that, the way he said that. So I think for a lot of these breweries, the fact that they, they like to collab with, you know, social media people because a, it does help to get their brand out there. But I've seen a lot of these breweries that are very large breweries. Muskoka brewery did one with the IG brew crew. Muskoka has no, no need for promotion. No need at all. They're, they're well known across Ontario, probably wider known. Um, they're one of the few brewers that pay a living wage to all their employees. You know, they're highly involved in the community, but they did it because they like to involve sort of that social media gang it's nice for everybody. It helps everybody out. You know, like I say, I always try and help promote people. I feel it's an ob not an ob well, it's an obligation because when you go first, it means you're laying down the stakes to help everybody else out. When you help everybody else up, we're all better for it. If it helps promote beer and more beer gets sold, you know, like we need to diversify our tap rooms need to look more like Canada looks, you know, a lot of bearded white dudes is great. But I mean, everybody needs to feel comfortable going in a tap room. So I look for collabs that are going to do better things for that. You know, we do collabs for the LGBTQ community. We do collabs for, you know, indigenous people. Um, you know, it's a very important message to send that craft beer needs to be for everyone because sometimes tap rooms don't kind of look that way. Yeah, you know, that's so that um, promoted on it on social media better than you can in a tap room. Yeah, that's where I, I like hearing about uh, things like the Society of Beer Drinking Ladies, hopefully future interview for our show, uh, is like they got together and they've been making beers. And, yeah. And uh, uh, Celia with uh, Orleans Brewing Company, her and her uh, other female coworker, they made a, a beer for the Women's uh, History Week. I, I know I, I butchered that, I'm sure. But it was a pomegranate milkshake IPA. Oh, my God. I'm just like, why did you not give me this to promote on the show? She's like, oh, it's I mean, going to sell out. And they do. These beers sell out. I mean, uh, my wife's been to a few events with the uh, SOBDL. There's another group here in, in Hamilton. Um, there's, oh, there, there's little groups everywhere. And they do events. My wife loves them because they're, they're safe. And there's no bros. You know, I mean, not that we, I don't, we don't deal with a lot of bros because that's not our crowd. But it's a very nice place for, especially for younger women, and women, you know, who don't feel comfortable around a lot of the men who try to explain beer to them, which kills me because most of the women I know who drink beer can walk circles around me when it comes to talking about beer. 
I always say the only difference is I was here first and I'm way louder <laughs> than everybody else. And I have no, I have no, I have no shame left. I've, I've done pictures shirtless in the snow because it just made me laugh. And I posted them and, and the brewery, a lot of it is with great lakes. I have a good relationship with them and their, their social media group. So they know I'm not making fun of the beer. I'm just having a laugh because I'm a big dude. I look mm-hmm. like a beer drinking guy. So me in a Hawaiian shirt, half open in the snow, promoting my dad bod Pilsner <laughs> yeah. is a funny picture, right? Like, so it's, again, it's give and take with everything. But I, I do feel that, you know, if you're, if you're there first, it doesn't mean that you're the best. It means I, I started doing it longer than anybody. I do it every day. So I've, I've done a beer review on Instagram for over 1,600 days consecutive. And I don't mean I saved them up. I mean, every single day for six, November 21st, 2015 was the last day. Sorry, 20th was the last day. So November 21st, 2015, every single day since that day, I've had at least one beer, mostly one beer every day. And I've reviewed it on Instagram every day. I haven't missed one. I haven't been, I've been sick and I'm like, ah, I can still smell it. it smells fine. Um, so no, I mean, that's insane. But it's part of who I am. Now I can't stop. Somebody's like, just take a day off. I'm like, I can't. Yeah. Because, I mean, then the street, somebody asked, and there, there's a suggestion that maybe we'll do this when we get to near 2,000 days, which will be next year, for charity. Like, do a charity thing. Say, all right, if we raise two grand for whatever charity, I will not have a beer on New Year's Day or whatever day it, it will be. Um, but, yeah, so, I mean, it's, that's it. Volume. <laughs> it's just volume. I mean, one even if it's one a day, it's not like you're getting blackout drunk on one beer. Sure. It's not like, like you're 90- drinking... It's not like you're drinking, you know, end of the world and then uh, Sam Adams no, no. Utopia and then, you know, this and this no. and that. It's no, most of my beers are it's one beer. I come home from work. I have dinner with my wife. We watch our show. You know, we taped a show from the night before. And then I, I go and I, I do a video for the beer most days now. Like last year, I think I did 580 videos, which is excessive. Um, but again, very low tech. I, I'm not really tech, technologically uh, advanced that way. And then I, I and usually I'll after the beer, I grab some pop and i go on and watch tv again it's very low key now nights like tonight i'm off tonight so tonight will probably be you know three four beers maybe a fifth one if i stay up for an extra half an hour watch some youtube videos i like to watch a lot of classic rock classic country music just kind of hang out um but for the most part i try and practice mindful drinking which makes you know enjoy what you have in your glass as opposed to just pounding it because so i think hopefully those days are behind me for the most part (laughs) Yeah, generally my only pounding of beers is when I'm at a game or at something else. And uh, that's probably not happening this year. So I'm going to actually get to enjoy my beers all year long and not have to get excessively drunk. I'm hoping reasonably my birthday is during the summer. I'm hoping maybe get together and have a couple of pints with my friends. You might be able to have a few friends. That's it. Like they make those little the little nucleuses of people you can hang out with. You know, yeah. you can trust these people. Um, it, it's beer is a social drink that's part of the problem beer is not meant to be enjoyed by yourself um if you want to analyze beer sure you got to do that by yourself it's hard to write a review in a tap room i've done it many times because i got to get that beer in because we're out we're out on the town for the night so the first brewery we go to that first pint i don't care if i've had it 12 times i'm reviewing it and we're gone and we're off for the night so i mean yeah there's contemplative beer when you're going to contemplate beer. like say on your thursdays when you're doing your you get those four beers and you're contemplating them you know, for me, my first beer tonight, I did the I did a West Coast IPA. I wrote about it. I'm good to go. The rest of the beers tonight, eh, maybe I'll post something later when I'm watching, you know, some some video. You know, I'll watch a Queen video and be like, this beer pairs really well with this song. Maybe I'll write a little blip. But, I mean, I've got to the point now where it doesn't really matter. Mm-hmm. I'm not as concerned with – there's no image. I don't have an image. I'm just kind of like – I'm, I'm kind of like the, the cornerstone. Like, I'm part of the cement now. I'm just there. You know, people know I'm there. I'm in there once a day, at least every day. EST 1600 days ago. <laughs> yeah. Like it's, it's, uh, it's, it's a lot of days. Like a lot of stuff has changed. I think I've had three different jobs, um, two different cars. It's, it's, it's been like five, it'd be five years this year, uh, consecutively. Uh, you know, I think I've, I have 1600 videos on YouTube, uh, three or 280, 300 blog posts, f- almost 5,000 Instagram reviews. You know, every year my top 10 list is, uh, I call it the 10, not the 10, not the top 10. It's the 10, the 10, the 10 beers that made the biggest impression on me. It doesn't necessarily have to be the best beer. Last year's best, last year's number one beer for me was a Pilsner um, called Donna, done here at Fairweather Brewing in Hamilton. 
there isn't a beer I had last year because it was such a good Pilsner and a really good Pilsner. Like Vim and Vigor from Dominion City is just below it, but um, it's stuck with me. I've never had a beer stick with me that quite that way. That was such a simple tasting beer that's so complex to make. Um, give me a Pilsner any day, though. Oh, a good Pilsner is worth its weight in gold. Yeah, one of my favorite beers last year to the Ontario region was uh, Old Tomorrow's Monty's Aged Ride Ale. It's just, oh my God, it's so complex. And I'm like, this is what it is. And they good... changed it. It's, it's been changed from when it originally came out. It came out in big bottles. I used to be, uh, well, do a lot of Old Tomorrow stuff because they had a, used to have a great social media gang. Not so much now. Um, there's still a contract brewer out of, I think they're brewing a big rig in mm-hmm. Ottawa. Uh, they changed the recipe in Monty's and made it better. Like the, the first one came out, we're like, eh. They changed it. We're like, this is really good. Like, yeah, good beer here. Um, and uh, unfortunately, because they, they did have a really good, their, their, sit, their, their Canadian pale ale, their original beer was quite nice. Um, but again, being a contract brewer is really hard because you don't have a tap room. You don't have a personality. You can't sell that beer face to face with people. You're putting it in a grocery store, hoping people buy it. Yeah, well, I know uh, here in Quebec, there's a bunch that started out as contract, but they became brick and mortar. Yeah, and a lot of people do, and that's fine. There's nothing wrong with contract brewing in and of itself. It's just, it's hard to penetrate the market now. You need a personality. You need, you want to go to a tap room. Like if you're out, like you say, you want to go on trips. I want to go on trips. I don't want to go to a supermarket and buy Belgian beer. I want to go to like the, the monastery and buy Belgian beer. I want to go to, you know, Pilsner or Cal. I don't know. I can buy that at the grocery store. And the LCBO, relatively fresh, I've had Pilsner or Cal. But apparently it's not the same. You know, so it's one of those beers, iconic, that I want to have there. Yeah, even just like a spot in, when I'm in Germany, I want to have. Even though it's yeah. the biggest mass, mass produced one, maybe getting it from the source is really where to go. So Big mug of German beer. <laughs> just a German lager beer. I mean, it will yeah. be... My friend went to, uh, he, I had one friend teaching English in Germany. He was a German, had a, had a German degree. He went and taught English in Germany. Another friend was living in England doing his master's and he traveled over to, England, to Germany for Oktoberfest. And they're both like, you need to go there. Like, yeah. it's your kind of people. I'm like, it, it, it's a place I really want to go. And again, no kids, so we can save up for that. Yeah, no, I've been told by a couple of people, it's like, go to Oktoberfest. I'm like, why? They're like, we don't have to explain this to you. Just yeah. go. go. I mean, right. I've heard Bo's Oktoberfest is a banging party. Too. It's fun. It is super like fun. I, I've, I, d- I've done three years in a row now. It's pretty fun. We had tickets last year, and unfortunately, just personal things come up, and we couldn't go, and it broke my heart. Uh, Bo's has been uh, another one of those breweries that's been with me since the beginning, uh, only because they were the only brewery that really had new stuff out all the time in the LCBO. So I was constantly drinking their beer and posting about it, um, I got to know them fairly well. It was funny. One time I made a video and I had broken my Bose glass and it broke my heart. I, I hadn't broken. My wife had broken it. So I made a joke in the video that my wife had broken my Bose glass. And lo and behold, maybe four or five days later, package shows up. Two new Bose glasses, two tulips from Bose, stolen from Steve's house, <laughs> the owner of Bose. His sister stole them and sent them to me because she felt bad that my wife had broken that glass. So I still love using, I thank Steve every time. Yeah. But I mean, again, Bose is one of those breweries that they're not sexy. They're not, you know, the new guy. They're not putting out hazy IPAs, although they are. Um, I still love them. I do. Uh, yeah, I like them too because they're all about renewable. I know they did a huge uh, solar uh, rooftop thing. Uh, they're constantly giving, well, I mean, a lot of these guys give their spent grain to the farmers because one, they are not paying for compost and two, it's making delicious right. animal food for me in the future. So I'm not ever going to complain about That's that. Right. Yeah. Uh, and Bose, uh, as a Montrealer, it's great. Bose is an hour and change away. And now we That's have right. Wood, Wood Brothers as well. Uh, I only just finally got to Wood oh. Brothers in December. And I don't think I've ever had any of their beer. I know them, haven't had any of their yeah. beer. And uh, things were going well, and we were talking about an interview. We were drinking with one of the brewers. I'm like, this is awesome. And then pandemic. So uh, it kind of puts all your plans on hold. I think you just got to kind of, you're doing the right thing. And and, I mean, I love the idea that you're kind of interviewing regular beer folks, you Mm -hmm. know, just kind of people who love beer to keep the conversation going is what we're trying to do while we figure out what to do next. You know, like, for me, I, nothing has changed about the way I do things. It's just, it's hard to find things to write about that aren't pandemically related. Um, 
Yeah, it's uh, I'm the same. It's you know, get to get my minds off things. I'll I'll watch a stand up comedy on Netflix at night. It's just uh, I know it's there in the background still, but if I can get it away from my brain for a couple hours, then I'm happy. So I watch a lot of George Carlin, um, a lot of old classic George Carlin, because I think he would have had a very good take on the way things are today. I think there's there's a certain vibe, you know that that he would have gotten because he he didn't he, he was all for the end of end of the end of the world <laughs> he was he was okay with it because he knew that humanity was you know sometimes not so great uh, we we do our best but there's a lot of not so great folks out there unfortunately he used to say ninety percent of craft beer people are fantastic and I still believe it I still think for the most part the people who drink craft beer tend to be pretty decent folks because they care about local stuff we're not drinking this beer because it's flashy. I've literally spaced out our orders to try and order from breweries that have, you know, we've done stuff with in the past that maybe have given me some free stuff and also some of the smaller guys. So I'm like, you know what? I know this guy, it would be a good boost for him. Maybe some people will order his beer. Maybe it'll help him out a little bit. Cause I like the guy that owns it. You know, he's a good guy. Um, that's like man, Antler, very tiny brewery in Bowmanville, Ontario. You know, it's just a little like two, three man operation. They make good beer. So I want to talk about their beer. Yeah, I got to start talking to my sister about doing curbside pickup in the Cambridge area to ship to her brother in Montreal if she's willing to. Absolutely. Uh, Get yourself I, some Block 3, some uh, Rhythm and Brews like we talked about before. Um, get some, oh, you know, Inasante. If you like you like, you like, like the IPAs, Inasante makes some great IPAs out of Kitchener. Uh, it's, again, one of my favorite places to go. I've got, I've got a cousin out there, so it's easy to go visit him and spend an afternoon drinking at a bunch of different breweries, taking cabs. Yeah, Ontario is very lucky. Uh, Montreal, stuff's a little spread out, but uh, downtown Montreal, you know, once things are up and running again, I could hit four brew pubs within a three minute walk of each other. So it's uh, nothing wrong with that. No, exactly. And and things will go back to some sort of normal. Uh, it's just a matter of what it is. And uh, just enjoy craft beer in the meantime of while you're doing it. I'm, I'm okay with drinking at home. I mean, it's safer anyway at this point. So you have no problem being a bit more of an introvert than versus extrovert like myself? I, I think so. I think the, my problem is, is when I do go out is I tend to overindulge a little bit because I'm having too much fun, right? And it, you know, it becomes it because everybody feels like they know me, especially when it's, you know, local events. I'm a pretty big proponent of everything. And not only craft beer, my hometown of Hamilton, I'm a big proponent of everything happening in this city matters a lot to me i've lived almost my entire life i think i lived out of town for like six months so i've lived in hamilton my whole life it matters to me that this city does well that we are a better place to live so people know who i am and you know when we go out it tends to be let me buy you a beer and i'm like okay but then let me buy you a beer and then it becomes a vicious circle of beer buying and then we just take an uber home and get pizza. yeah that's uh that's been happening with myself and my videographer phil is we're starting to Oh, here's a beer for you guys. Well, we're two guys, so that means we each owe a beer now, and then you yeah. or us. So, uh, just I mean, getting it's good to see. Yeah, becoming. Uh, I mean, you know, we never thought really, really get beyond just hanging out with some brewers here and there, but becoming influencers is a fantastic thing, and I'll never take for granted everything that's been given to us and, and the opportunities it's this is presented. So, well, there's two ways to look at it. I think that you've got the you hit the nail on the head there, and that's kind of how I look at it too. I look at it like, hey, listen, I didn't do nothing to deserve anything. I just, I did what I do every day. I do the same thing. It's, it's, I, I'm a routine guy. I like routine. Um, but to see, you know, that maybe we can help out, maybe we can help the brewers out. Maybe we can help bring more people into the fold. Maybe we can help, you know, create a buzz around something or we can help, you know, cause a lot of these guys are tiny little operations and it's good to help out the little guys. Doesn't mean the big guys aren't doing good things too. Like the bigger breweries, the bows and that. I, if you've been to bows and seen the tanks of lug tread, I've never seen tanks this big. They're ridiculously mm. huge. They're like eight times the size of a regular tank. Gorgeous. They're a massive company. And then you get little tiny companies like a barn cat out in Cambridge. They're open two days a week, seven hours a week, and they sell out. Yeah. Yeah. That's uh, like I mentioned with Sorum earlier on. They, they sell out a beer pretty quickly. So I, 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 there's somebody went online. Was it Wood Brothers that went online and sold out in like three minutes? Yeah. I like, believe that's something. gone. Mm -hmm. Three minutes. Like there's they're, Badlands. There's they're a very, Badlands. yeah. Uh, Wood Brothers is a very tiny operation at the moment. They've already expanded once, uh, and before there, there's expansion in the plans. So more will yeah, become they, available. They start on a certain scale, and they're like, oh, okay, let's see how this goes. And they're like, holy crap, everything's selling, but it's hard to scale up because it's not just doubling the recipe. You got to 
there's a lot of, there's a great example of that. So Nickel Brook, you know, Nickel Brook, mm-hmm. um, they make a beer called Headstock. It's my favorite beer. It's an IPA, West Coast IPA. Now they went from a small batch brewing. They, they teamed up with Collective Arts. They bought this huge building, massive. They shared a brewmaster for years. He went from brewing it in a small system to a big system. It took him over a year to get it right. I wasn't drinking at the time, but everybody who drank it then said for a year, it was, the quality was up and down because the scale went so huge. He had trouble figuring it out. It wasn't just doubling the malt, doubling the hops. There's a, a unique, you know, I, I'm not, again, not a brewer. I'm a great drinker. Yeah. But so These guys are just miracles at chemistry. Science. It's all science. <laughs> so there's a, there's a brewery here in Hamilton called Merritt. And the, the head brewer is a guy called Spinney. Uh, great brewer. He loves the science of brewing. And he'll do Instagram posts about the science behind what's going on in his beer. And I love it. It's nerdy. It is so specific craft beer but you know you would you would geek out on that because you're like that is so cool like he yeah. talks about you know wild yeast beers and how they brew their ipa and how they've taken their ipa and made it better you know they keep tweaking it a little bit because they're a new, new brewery i love the nerd stuff it's fun yeah and, and we're called beer nerds for a reason so beer nerd beer geek i'm okay with that just don't uh, don't be an elitist uh, again I, I talked about that there's there are levels to craft beer like when you first get into craft beer when you're a novice you dip your toe in so you still have your six pack old mill but maybe you get these two new beers and you try them and then you become like evangelical about beer and you 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 will not drink macro and you will make fun of people for drinking it and then you kind of mellow out and you kind of get to this acceptance stage where you're like you know what man you drink what you want i'll drink what i want we're all happy we're having a good time i don't care about the beer i want to spend time with you drinking beer like my uncle drinks canadian if you go to his house you're not allowed to drink my uncle's in his 70s you cannot bring beer to the man's house it's an insult to him if you bring you can bring him a six pack for as a gift but if you can't bring your own beer so when i go to his house i have to drink canadian you know what i love that canadian because he's my seven year old uncle we used to drink in the bar together all the time to me, that Canadian tastes as good as any hazy IPA I've ever had because of the company I'm with. So you, you want to, we can't skip the evangelical stage. Everybody goes through it where you're like, everything craft beer. But then you come to realize, hey, yes, everything craft beer, but let people have what they like. Let people enjoy what they like. Yeah, I uh, I have a friend, I always, uh, I always give him uh, shit for not pouring a craft beer in a glass. I don't care if he's drinking whatever else out of the can. Drinking a glass, yeah. But yeah, drinking a glass. Uh, a he's clean not, glass. He's not a big fan of IPAs. Uh, I get it. It's his. It's not his palate. So, uh, but the problem is, uh, the market right now is IPAs. So, it, and believe me, buying beer for my wife is. So we found one brewery called Little Beast in Whitby. They had three stouts and three saisons and one IPA, and I'm like. Happy birthday, honey. Like your birthday's in August, but happy birthday. Here's all these beers for you. Um, and funny, we were talking to the brewmaster, uh, Aaron. Uh, again, female brewmaster. And I shouldn't have to say that because that should just be okay, normal. It isn't mm-hmm. though. And she has a lot of her own. We've talked about her story. Um, like we have time to talk to her about it. And But she says, I like stouts and saisons. So I brew stouts and saisons. She said, I throw an IPA in because my husband likes them once in a while. Says, I'm like, That's fantastic. You know what I mean? So for that order we put in, I got two IPAs and then we got two of the stouts and two of this. I like Saison's too and stouts, but for me, stouts are very seasonal specific or I have to be in the mood for one. Yeah. Like if I'm going to have a, just a beer after I review a beer, I'm going to grab an IPA. Like right, that's, this is a West coast IPA from Cameron's called knucklebone. And it's just a regular, nothing fancy, bare bones, West coast IPA, toasty malt, caramel grapefruit pith orange pith pine nice beer yeah i i don't think i've ever drank a guinness outside of the month of march so it's no and you know what's funny guinness used to be the scariest beer in the world to me like it really was but you would had to drink one every saint patrick's day before you could have any other beer we would always make everybody had to drink a guinness i would just i would choke it down i had one last summer whatever reason i bought one yeah it's good beer and again, I trust that beer. And if I'm at a, a bar, a lot of times that's the best option. But it's not as good of a stout as a lot of the local stout you buy, which is weird now to think that. Yeah, it, I'm sure it's though from the source. I'm sure if you're in Ireland at the Guinness Brewery sitting at that, um, it's like a, a Sky Lounge, I think it's called. Uh, I've heard that, you know, from the source is better than 
from Again, the so guys who brewed in Montreal. So drinking it, drinking Pilsner, Callan Pils, and drinking a Guinness in Ireland. These are transformative experiences as a beer drinker, which will change how you see a beer. Like a friend of mine who is a hardcore craft beer drinker. He like hardcore, but he went to Czech Republic for he was teaching and he drank a Pilsen and he says, Yeah, it changed my my perspective on how that beer is. He says, I wouldn't drink it in Toronto. He says, but right there, right at that moment, sitting in their beer garden, it was the greatest Pilsner I'd ever had in my life because it is a great beer. It just happens to be owned by Budweiser. Mm -hmm. Mill Street didn't forget how to brew beer. Uh, La Fin de Mon, like, uh, who is it? Yeah, like they, they didn't forget how to brew beer. And by all accounts, Sapporo leaves everybody alone. Yeah, I know in Ebru, uh, yeah. I've been wanting to talk to the, um, so they're part of Cheval Blanc as well. Uh, and Cheval Blanc, he's still the guy. He's, I think he's like craft brewery number two in Quebec, like the second right. one ever made. Uh, and then he sold it, but then he, uh, to Brasser RJ, it's called. And then he still has his own brewery. And I can taste the difference of like what he brews as a white versus the white that's brewed by Bri Bra. It's still a, a spectacular beer that Brasser RJ and Fain and all different. those beers. But yeah, I'm sure they're different than than what the source was. So. Yeah, it I mean, is what it is. Unibrew but... makes some great beer. Yeah, I buy this. I buy the mix pack every Christmas. I review it every Christmas because it's a great six pack of beer. It really is. I mean, it, it's it's and for a lot of Ontario craft beer drinkers, it's sort of their first introduction to craft beer in, in Quebec. Like if you go back far enough, that was that was what you got. You know, they had those big bottles, the reserve bottles, which come out every year. I buy them. I buy Mill Street every once in a while. I didn't for a long time because I'm like, oh, that's big beer. Eh, Bill Street introduced a new beer. I'm going to buy it because I want to know. Budweiser introduced a nitro lager. I'm going to buy it because I want to know and I want to let everybody else know. So either yeah. you buy it or you don't. I, you know, the copper lager I bought, I bought the black lager. The black lager was not bad. If it didn't say Budweiser on it, most craft beer drinkers would be hard pressed to not like it. Mm -hmm. And it was 7.1%. And you got four cans for like 12 bucks. So, I mean, it, it has a purpose to certain people. <laughs> for sure. Um, so uh, what's next for uh, your Drunk Pokeroo brand? So right now, I think, I mean, especially, like I said, with the pandemic, it is very, very difficult to think of anything else. Um, for me, it tends to go in waves. So there's, I have different, we have different portals, as, as you know, it is, you know, we have Instagram, which is pictures. Instagram for me tends to be mostly about, the beer, what the beer tastes like, what score I give it, which by the way, I hate doing, but I can't stop doing because I did once and people messaged me and it was insane. So I give it a score to five based on the style. So if you tell me this is a West Coast IPA, I judge it as a West Coast IPA, personal score. Here you go, you know, 4.5 out of five because it's a great beer. Um, there it tends to be that. The stories tend to be a little more funny. You know, I can do some funny stuff. I have TikTok for some reason. I don't know how TikTok works, but it's fun. Um, Facebook tends to, Facebook is the weirdest experience for a craft beer sort of blog or anything else. It's more interactive. It's mostly middle-aged dudes like my mm -hmm. age. And when I post a beer, they share the beer they're drinking in the comments. Like I'm having this beer and I'm like, this is what it is. But they're, it's a very interactive group of, I have a, a very dedicated group of people on Facebook, even though I'm not a big fan of the platform. I stay there because they really enjoy what I give them. And I, I whatever. Like I put my, like I could force people to go to YouTube to watch my videos. I know the guys on Facebook don't want to go to another platform. So I just put the videos on Facebook because I know they want to watch them there. And I'm okay with that. Again, I would love to see that thousand followers on, on YouTube just because it's fun, but at what expense? I'm not never going to get rich on this. So it's, yeah. it's for fun. Yeah. Um, we're not that kid reviewing toys who made seven million. No, no, year. no. We're not, we're not opening up, you know, shoes. Um, and then fa uh, Twitter, Twitter is probably the closest anybody's ever going to get to with the blog together. Those two things are who I really am mm -hmm. because I find Twitter is much more connective because it's much more conversational, can be confrontational. I don't see a lot of it cause I just, I don't get into it, but I can be myself a little more, you know, it's a little more blue. Um, I do write Twitter poems. I am known as the barley poet. Um, I do drop in those you know, 240 character poems every once in a while. Uh, but I think the, the thing is that each platform has its own use. Uh, learning how to use them properly is one of the biggest challenges anybody who wants to get into talking about beer is. Connecting with people is very, very difficult. 
people see through kind of if you're fake. Um, I think that's what my blog has given me as a platform of people know I'm honest about everything. So when I say I really like a beer, I'm not doing it because I got it for free. I paid for all the beers I had tonight, but I also got a 10 pack of beer from Perry Sound today that I didn't. My wife's like, did you order more beer? And I'm like, I swear to God, <laughs> I didn't order any beer. Um, so that gives you an honesty that I think is missing on Instagram a little bit because Instagram still tends to be the perfect thing. You know what I mean? Like the perfect picture, the perfect beer. Nobody really wants to say anything bad about a beer because they're worried about losing that kind of access. I never had the access. I get the access because I'm honest. If I really don't like a beer, I usually don't post it. I contact the brewer and say, hey, I had this beer. I had a real problem with the beer. If they will connect with me and say, you know what? Yeah, we did too. Here's our problem. You know, we're going to take care of it. Great. If they don't, then I go public and I talk about how shitty your beer is. Yeah, I know a couple of brewers have have noticed like they've sent something out and then they're looking at Untapped and then they're looking at at uh, Twitter and they're looking at Instagram and they're like, wait a second, and then they check the beer and they're like, oh, this should not have gone out. This was because ready. it happened after. Like it can happen in the can. So I know Headstock had an issue uh, from Nickelbrook and Collective Arts had an issue with Ransack. Same thing. There was an issue with the malt and it was interacting with the proteins and it was becoming uh, like turbid. So you had floaties. Beer taste is 100% the same. So I didn't have an issue with it. I'm like, all right, well, sometimes there's floaties in beer. It's an unfiltered beer. It happens. It happens. It tasted the same. That's my thing. Flying Monkeys out in Barry released a beer called Sparkle Chunks. Well, Sparks are Sparkle Puff. But there's two different versions of the beer that came out. There was one that was super chunky and tasted terrible. And there was one that was like hazy and creamy. And it was absolutely one of my favorite beers. The problem was they wouldn't acknowledge the issue that was happening. So I called them out on it. I, I got actual death threats. Somebody said, I hope you have a heart attack and die because I didn't like this beer. And I said, that's my only, my only qualm is own your mistakes. If you make a mistake, just say, you know what, guys, we screwed up. Sorry, this beer did this in the can. We're going to fix it. Great. If you don't, that's where I'll kind of get a little mad. Yeah, for sure. Uh, so I got another question for you today. This has been a fantastic talk. Uh, let the people know where they can find you all over the internet. I mean, you type in the drunk pokeroo, and and I'm gonna guess I'm gonna come up first. I'm on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Uh, Twitter's a little blue. I'm gonna warn you ahead of time. What is a little blue? And TikTok, but I, I would just stay away from the TikTok. I don't know what's happening. Um, I'm trying the fun stuff. It's a little bit of fun, but honestly, uh, Instagram is every day. Twitter is multiple times a day. YouTube is usually once a day. Depending if I'm off, you might get two. Uh, my videos are very short, not a lot of polish, unfortunately. I, my wife did buy a new computer, so we'll see if we can learn how to do some things. But uh, I want to thank you very much. Uh, this has been a blast. It's fun to talk about beer, especially right now. Fun to meet a new friend um, and share some beer talk in the middle of a sort of a global pandemic. It makes you feel a little closer to the world. Yeah, as I mentioned with Steve with uh, Southern Ontario Beer Boys, I do want to uh, get some more, more people like yourself and do influencer events when I, myself, and my videographer make it out to Hamilton, where we all Absolutely. get together at a brewery and have a bunch of beers and just talk beer all night, uh, persona non grata, just being ourselves without the camera and just hanging out. I want to do the same thing in Montreal. Um, oh, hey, Montreal's on the list, man. We, <laughs> we, we drove through Montreal when we went to Quebec City, and I'm like, we needed to plan better for next time because I hear Montreal, the scene is insane. So we're definitely, that's, that's, you know what, we just got to get through this. It's unprecedented. It's, I call it abnormal history. Mm -hmm. We'll come out the other side different, but drinking great beer. So that's okay by me. Exactly. And uh, I'm looking forward to what the craft beer industry has in the future, as well as right now. And yeah, uh, if you're ever in Montreal, feel free to hit up the Instagram. Uh, I work Monday to Friday, but Friday has a 4 p.m., all weekend I'm open so <laughs> that's perfect uh as for our show you can catch us at all beer inside everywhere all beer inside channel on youtube as you should be watching uh subscribe and likes also helps the show and uh if you're on the allbeerinside.com page on the right hand of the side if you're a canadian shopper click on the amazon link and give us some of just bezos's money he's got enough it helps us buy equipment for future interviews uh for when we're in public uh, so we can buy cameras lights and all the stuff we need uh, to help the show uh as for that as you can see in the background on the right of uh, Drunk Pokeroos, drink craft, not crap. Great. Thanks a lot, man. Really appreciate Cheers. that. Oh, I'm done. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> <laughs>